Welcome into the Sports Objective as we have a very special show tonight. And we're very excited to have with us Save ECU Swim and Dive. We've got several, we've got uh, several swimmers we'll be talking to tonight, and including we have an ECU Hall of Famer from, and I think it was uh, the last couple of years, the former coach of the swim team, Rich Rick Kobe. How are you, coach? I'm doing fine. Appreciate you having me on your podcast. Absolutely. We have with us also Lindsay Takunin. Lindsay's been doing a great job with, uh, I guess, are you the leader of Save ECU Swim and Dive? Uh, I can't take credit as the leader, but <laughs> certainly one of them. <laughs> and I know Dan Schumann, you also are, I've seen your name uh, on a lot of uh, social media stuff as well. Um, guys, I'm very excited to have you guys on. Uh, the program means a lot to me. I never swam in the program, but I can tell you that I was telling coach when he took over in 1982 in the program, I was nine years old. So um, the point of bringing that up is the fact of the storied program of having and coach, I wanted to talk with you about the program itself. I know I heard last week on PRL, was it 66 years the program has been in existence? Yeah, it started by Dr. Ray Martinez in 1953. So uh, 66 years and uh, 66 years of incredible, incredible success. You know, conference championships, you know, I think the total was 21. You know, I think we've had over 200 and something all Americans. Uh, it's been a, uh, it still is a story program. We won the right. championship last year. That's what I was going to talk about. Coach Javis has been on our show. We're very, uh, one of our favorite coaches at ECU. And um, we thank a lot of him and all the coaches there. I know they work really hard behind the scenes. Uh, let's talk about your run there, coach. I know that uh, it was funny. Um, I heard you say last week on the show with PRL that, you haven't swam in since 1976. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. Uh, any type of competitive swimming. Uh, okay. I started in 72, and my last year was 1976. And uh, a little bit of ocean swimming, that's about it. So, right. uh, but yeah, you don't have to get in the water to coach. I want to ask you guys, we're having coach, uh, what's the Rick Kobe, <laughs> as far as before a swim meet, what's the the pep talk, what's the like right before a meet? What's uh, one of his speeches? Do you have any memories of any of his speeches that he gave that's uh, legendary that maybe that you can tell <laughs> on a podcast? Um, do you want to go first? I'll go, uh, well, I don't know if, if I can remember one specifically. It's been a little while, okay. but I just think I remember the atmosphere. I remember, especially at home meets, being in the locker rooms. We would all go into one, and it was a tiny space, but we all just fit. And it was in that moment, um, it just was a special moment every time. It never got old. And each each time was a little bit different. And Coach Kobe, he would, he'd say the words that he had. And then really, we were then just left as a team. And our captains usually then took over. And then at that point, we'd run out. And we all had to hit the door before you run. It just, it was just that moment and that energy um, and that that unity that we had right before going out onto the pool deck and into our cheers. And I think just that excitement and energy and team spirit and unity is probably what I remember more. Um, and that feeling of just family and feeling indestructible almost as a team um, is really what I remember most about uh, kind of those moments. I don't, I don't know how it was for you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, very much the same. You know, I always had this sense of, uh, the message from the coaches being you, you've put in the work now go do your job kind of thing uh, and, and that that really high energy level but not sort of this frantic energy just just really go go do what you've been trained to do um, and the, obviously those are the kinds of lessons that you take with you long after you've left the, left the program in terms of putting in the work and being ready to, to, to go to battle uh, whether it's your, your day-to-day life or, or trying to save the program so it's a <laughs> I think in a way it's sort of prepared us for this kind of battle too. I remember the only time I've been in the pool at East Carolina is I, I'm so old. We used to have to pass the swim test, Coach, as you probably remember. remember. And, and they, they put people out in the in the deep end there, I guess the diving area, and there were people that were scared to death. They had never swam in their life. They didn't know how to swim. And they were some of them were <laughs> contemplating failing the course because they were so scared they thought they were going to drown. So well, that's one of my highlights. Did. Yeah. And they still put him in the diving well, anyways. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so that, that was that was unusual. Yeah, they stopped doing that a long time ago for, for obvious reasons. 
<laughs> well, I'm glad that I'm glad they did. Uh, certainly, uh, let's talk about instead of about me. Let's talk about uh, why we're here tonight. I think it's very important. Uh, a little, it's, I guess it's hard to believe. Uh, almost two weeks ago, we get the news that uh, we were afraid of. Uh, as far as uh, I didn't think this sport, I'll be honest. I didn't think you guys. I was wrong. I didn't think it would be swimming and diving that would take the hit. Uh, four sports cut men's swimming, men's and women's swimming and diving, and obviously men's and women's tennis. Uh, four sports. We're down to 16 currently uh, right now. But I wanted to ask you guys, go around the table. We'll start with Coach. Why is the swim and dive team, why is it important to you? I think I know the answer, but I'll put it out there for the show. Well, it was, you know, 37 years of, of my life. Um, so that's really important. And the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of alumni that I've had. But the sad part is it's not about – or who came before me. It's about who's here now and who's going to come after. Because that's an opportunity that's that's lost for, you know, 50 to 60 kids every year. So it will always have a special place in my heart. But, you know, it was, like you said, I had no clue that this was even going to be potentially an option. I mean, how do you, how do you take the the top one or two athletic programs in the history of a university and cut them with a, a basically a very minimal budget compared to the other programs. You know, I want to ask, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, coach. I was lagging a little bit on my part. I'm sorry about that. I wanted to ask you the question of uh, as far as budget goes, how much, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how much is the budget for swimming and diving? Our budget, the budget for next year, because everyone had to take a 20% cut, uh, and this includes scholarships, uh, coaches' salaries, and the operating budget was $650,000 for each team. And to me, man, you're getting a good bang for your buck for that wow. for that for that conference because you realize that there's only been, I think, six American Conference Championships won at East Carolina. And we've got four of them and obviously would be the favorite for next year. So, um, for, like I said, it's not it's not one of the high budgeted programs. And, and that's what the confusing part. I think you've seen this, that our student athletes last year in swimming and diving paid over eight hundred thousand dollars to go to East Carolina. So, you know, if, if you want to play numbers, the university is losing you know, close to a million dollars every year by not having those kids on campus. One question I had for you guys, for Lindsay and Dan, and maybe even coach as well, and I'll get to why this, I'll get back to why it's important to <laughs> in a second. But uh, I've, I've heard of uh, programs where they've actually uh, gone without scholarships. Is that something that you guys will be in favor of? That means to save the program, or is that something I know there's not that many scholarships compared to how many swimmers we have? I wish it was more. But that's a whole nother uh, show. I don't want to get into my soapbox there. But as far as uh, would you guys be willing to basically, I guess, Coach, you said instead of walk-ons, there's swim-ons, I guess. Is that what you said last week? Yeah, and, and we would be willing to do that. I mean, we weren't ever given uh, uh, the option. I mean, you certainly you don't want to lose scholarships. I mean, it's a fully funded no. program. But right. if you had to lose three on each side, that's six scholarships. You do the math. Okay. So you, we, we've been successful with what we have now. And we've been successful with a lot less. So, and I'm sure Dan and, and Lindsay would agree. Uh, you know, you just you just fight harder. That's a you know that's what we do here at East Carolina. That's what we've done forever. Less is more. We always do. We don't have the the big boy budget, but we we compete with the big boys and we beat them, right, guys? Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. What, absolutely. Uh, Lindsay and Dan, uh, both of you, what, what, why is the university, as far as East Carolina, why is the program, why should we save it? Why is it important to you? Dan, you want to go first? This time? Sure, I'll go first. I'll go first. Uh, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of different perspectives. I mean, certainly there's the personal element to it. You know, there there are relationships and there's camaraderie that you forge that you carry with you the rest of your life. You know, I, I married another swimmer who was on the women's team. Uh, so it, it it has a pretty tremendous personal impact for me. 
Uh, but even beyond that, there's, of course, the legacy of success, the 21 championships, as you mentioned, uh, and, and the prestige that brings to the campus. And even beyond the athletic component, they're also really smart kids on the team these days, smarter than I was when I was there, um, who they're academically successful, too. The women's team GPA was something like 3.6 average GPA across the team well above the, the, the average baseline GPA of the university. So it, it helps raise the academic prestige too. So if you look, look at all those attributes between, sure, the intra-team aspect, the academic success, the athletic success, you know, it's, 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 it's only a, a, a full set of positives that it brings to the campus for, as Coach Kobe mentioned, a pretty uh, slim economic footprint when you look at the actual, you know, net, net fiscal impact of it. So it's, it's got a pretty tremendous, um, it punches above its weight in, in terms of what it brings to the university. And guys, we're having former uh, swimmers, obviously. We had Ginger Curley saying 60 years, uh, 66 years of winning tradition. And then we have, is it, is that Murr Bridges, Bridgers, Mayor? Mayor, Mayor Bridges. Bridges. One, of the, one of the greatest athletes ever to attend East Carolina. She said less ha than half of the swimmers receive the scholarships. The only are fully pay a tuition the university loses, mo loses money with this decision. So, and, uh, and else she has she had another comment we'll put up here real quick. Uh, ECU embodies the values of the school and collegiate athletes. Our coaches emphasize from the time that we step on campus that we're all student athletes mm -hmm. with students coming first, student coming first. ECU swimming and diving regularly has the highest GPAs among the other athletic programs. And many of us have taken what we've learned in our swimming careers in East Carolina, ECU, and gone on to become leaders in our industries and our communities across the country. And uh, Mayor, I couldn't agree more. That is uh, that is so true. And uh, a coach, I know you have to be proud. How many, I wanted to ask you, Coach, how many uh, people do you have as far as, uh, as far as swimmers over the years? How many have come through the program with you? And maybe if you have a number or generically a number uh, throughout the 66 years, do you have any idea? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, you know, you figure, you know, I, I coached for 35 years and each class is averages, uh, you know, 15 kids. So that's 60. So I mean, hundreds I mean, on, on this campaign. I think uh, we have yeah, we have 800 and something on emails. And I think we probably have close to 500 that have actually actively responded and whatnot. And, and of course, we want everyone to not only respond, but respond with their uh, wallet and purse. Let's talk about that. Uh, we actually had on there with Coach, uh, and let's see if we can put that back up there. I'm going to uh, – Bubba Rosenbaum is uh, is with me tonight. He'll be on in just a second, but I want to put this back up here on the on the ticker, um, if I can, just to set the website. Um, but we have the uh, website, saveecuswimdive.org. Uh, guys, talk about that, Coach. Uh, all three of you, if you want to talk about it, we've got more swimmers. We got more swimmers than we have uh, the time. We're going to make time for the guys that are, that are here in the studio with us. So we're going to bring in in just a moment. But talk about the uh, the website because I think that's really exciting. That's uh, breaking news, right? Yeah, Dan, <laughs> go ahead because you were a big part of that. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, and it's really intended just to be a place to for people who can get you know accurate information about the state of the program uh, and, and understand how they can help us, how they can support us. Um, and, and as you'll see, if you go to savecuswimdive.org, um, follow our social channels, help amplify our message a little bit. I mean, that, that's really what we're looking for at this point is really trying to get as many voices as we can supporting us. And of course, those who, who, who can, we really hope you'll support us uh, financially as well by pledging a donation so that we can we can continue to, to try to engage the administration in conversations about restoring and, and sustaining these programs for years to come, uh, just based on the weight of, of really what they bring to the university. And I was telling coach before we started, before you guys popped on, I've already given a hundred. I'll keep giving money towards the cause. I really believe in the program. If I didn't, this is our show. And Bubba, I know, believes in the program as well. If we didn't think that much of you, obviously we wouldn't have you on, but I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I believe in the program and I really believe that, uh, one thing I want to ask you, Coach, I'm putting you on the spot. I've already told you about this anyway. Um, but I think I think you said this on with Troy. Troy did a great job with you on PRL last week. If you haven't heard that, it's in the archives with at Pirate Radio. But um, I know that you guys, I think Lindsay said it too, 
is just give us a number. I said it last night on our show. We had another show. Give us a number that we need to raise. I really believe that the the success stories Mayor was talking about, but there's so many people that we're going to have on tonight that are alums, that are doctors, lawyers. There are so many great people that have come through the program that are Pirate Club members, oh, by the way, um, that give back to the university in addition to for the swim um, and dive program. So I think there is, uh, would you guys agree that if we can, if if anybody in the administration will say, you guys need to raise a million dollars, two million dollars, whatever we need to raise, I'm sure that you guys could come up with it, right? Well, we at least we know what we were dealing with. Uh, you know, so at this point, all we can do is, is ask, uh, you know, anyone that's out there watching and our alum, it's, it's time to give. And we have a five year, uh, we have a five-year pledge, uh, you know, uh, and that itself is right now, it's just a commitment if things come back to what, what we want it to be. And then we have a GoFundMe fund, which is going to help us with the uh, all the uh, media stuff that we're going to try to hit in the next week or so between newspapers and uh, TV ads. But right now we have, we're just looking for folks that uh, want to bring this back and that's going to take, uh, it's going to take some money. Mm -hmm. This is uh, with us right now is uh, one of the hosts of the show, Bubba Rosenbaum. Bubba's joining us. Hey, man, how are you? I'm doing well, Dave. Sorry about the delay. I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, uh, my fatherly duties called as my wife is not currently at home. But uh, no, a question I have for you, folks. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just it's a little bit of lag on my part, Mr. Mom. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a lag on my part too. Hopefully, I won't freeze up. Um, Internet's acting funny, but uh, no, Coach, uh, Dave references that interview you had with Troy Dreyfus. Excellent interview, like he said, and I heard you t address the natatorium, the condition of the pool. Obviously, you would prefer to have larger coaches, coaches' offices and locker rooms. That goes without saying. But as far as the condition of the pool, I know it was remodeled or renovated within the last five to six years. Is that correct? Yeah, pool's beautiful. I mean, you've got a nice picture of it right on your screen. Uh, it's it's gorgeous, and and the, the offices are fine. The locker rooms are small, but like I said with Troy, all we do in the locker room is put our suits on and head on out to the pool. So, not an issue. If it was a problem, we wouldn't have won as much, right? I mean, it's not necessarily <laughs> the uh, yeah. you guys would keep. Hey, if uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other sports. Not trying to pin sport against sport, like we talked about, but. There will be a lot of sports that would love to have the tradition of the swim program. And all you guys do is win, win, win. I mean, as championship after championship. And it's so many that you forget how many I, I was telling you, coach, you forget how many conference championships you guys have won over the years, because I guess we're just so accustomed to the swim and dive program to win every year. It's like it's like to me, Bubba and I were talking about this recently, a week or so ago, that it's like we're so used to you guys winning, we forget how many you won. That's you, you win all the time. Well, that's a great comment, and uh, you know, people used to ask me every year how your team's going to be, and my go-to answer every year was, "It's going to be the best we've ever had." And uh, <laughs> you know, we did. We just and and when I left, you know, Coach Jabs continued it. And I took over for Ray Sharf, who was very successful. He won a bunch of championships. And, and then before him was Ray Martinez, who started the program uh, and won two small college national championships. So this place has been doing it. That pool has been doing it for, I don't know, but how many years? 69. So what is that? Close to is that 50 years or 51 years or something. It's a yep. long time. Long time. It needs nothing. All it needs is swimmers. And we have we we're in good shape there. We got plenty of the queue right now. We're gonna get you guys on. We got folks in the studio. We can only put so many up on the screen at one time. So forgive us. So be patient. Those that are uh, actually watching and they're listening right now in the queue, as we call it, um, they're in the studio, so to speak. Um, Bubba, I know you had another question, so I'm gonna yield it back to you. Yeah, just following up on what I was saying about the natatorium, coach. Uh, uh, you addressed the pool, but as far as the maintenance on the pool. Um, enlighten our viewers and listeners as far as that's concerned. Uh, like, what does it cost and how often is that done and so forth? Well, I don't know. Uh, I can't imagine it's very expensive. Uh, we switched over to uh, salt uh, a few years ago, so we don't use anywhere near the amount of uh, chlorine. 
So, and our filters are all computerized. So there, we have a guy that's in charge of the pool and we may see him once a day, check on the computers. Uh, I don't know what the bill is. I am sure that it's nothing outrageous that we couldn't cover. So I really can't answer that question. The maintenance on it is easy. Uh, it really is. They have a, a vacuum that's automatic. You put it in, you leave it there, it runs overnight. And the morning you take it out, it's clean and, and you keep rolling. I know the obvious thing, guys, I was going to mention to you uh, with Dan and Lindsay being former swimmers with, uh, we have the website folks. If you're seeing that on the screen, the ticker underneath uh, us, I uh, wanted to mention to you folks, make sure that you give. In addition to giving, I know Lindsay had a video out today on Save Swim, uh, EC Swim and Dive. Um, I know there's all kinds of ways, social media, giving, there's all kinds of ways to bring this program back. Um, I, I would like to believe that uh, we're not going to lose the program. I know on paper right now, that's the case. But uh, what are you guys doing to, uh, to save the program and get the word out? Yeah, so I think um, right now we've been a lot on social media and emails, uh, try, you know, trying to engage current swimmers, uh, alumni. I mean, we've got parents of alumni, parents of current swimmers. We have friends and well-wishers of ECU Swim and Dive who have all taken an interest. So it, it really is um, an eclectic group of people who have shown up so far and said, we care about this program for certain reasons. We have people from, you know, the Greenville community who have ties right. to the local club who practice there. And they're saying, you know, uh, we had a grandma who said my kids swam and now my grandkids swim there. If ECU swim and dive is gone, uh, what's going to happen to Minji's in a year or two, you know, there will be no home for the, you know, the club team that swims there. So the impact of losing this team extends far beyond just East Carolina University. It really would be a huge negative impact on the community as a whole. And I think that is maybe even the greater loss is the loss that the facility at a whole, as a whole will be to, to the surrounding community. Um, it's been a pillar in my opinion and coach Kobe could maybe talk more on it, but I think it's been a pillar of the swimming community in the area for years. So, it, you know, we're not, we're, we want to save our beloved team. We want to save the championship winning team, but it really extends more than that. There's a lot more to lose. Yeah. I was going to say to add to that guys, I have a friend that I work with a coworker. Uh, she's a grandma of a, uh, he actually graduated, I think, or graduating this COVID mess. I'm not sure when the graduation is, uh, but he graduated from Rose this year and he's been swimming competitively for a long time. And she was devastated and signed. She and uh, her husband, his grandfather, a whole bunch of people, their family signed your petition you had because uh, it made a huge impact on his life. And uh, again, he gra graduated from Greenville Rose um, and uh, it made it as far as confidence. Uh, he's going to, un unfortunately, to NC State, uh, but he's going to be an engineer and make a big difference in his in his world. And uh, and swimming has been a big part of his life. So. That's one example of many that we could talk about all night uh, with the impact it had for the local community in Greenville. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm an age group co age group coach now among many things that I do. But um, so just hearing that loss and realizing that loss on an age group level, how is that going to impact then? You know, you lose college programs, age group programs maybe start suffering because of that. What happens then to our national teams? who go to represent our country. If you right. keep losing these non-revenue sports, what happens to our national teams? What happens to our feeder programs? If you don't have collegiate level non-revenue sports, what happens to the age group level of those sports? Yep. So while we are just one and we are trying as best as we can to battle on pirates and save this team, I think it's a greater, it's a, it's a bigger picture and a bigger impact that people really, I think, need to start paying attention to as a whole. And while we might not, we're the non-revenue sports, so we're the bottom when it comes to importance, it seems. However, you know, when it comes to our big national events, we are the ones who tend to carry, our, you know, carry our weight, so to say. Mm -hmm. um, when you turn on the Summer Olympics, what are the sports people are watching? Well, I'm going to tell you swimming is definitely one of the ones up there at the top. So um, there's a lot more to lose and there's a lot. It's a seems to be a you know, on well, this time, an epidemic of of these programs being cut. And 
it's it's really it's sad on a whole but we are here to at least fight and we're really just asking um for a seat at the table for someone to just, just tell us here if you can do this then we can bring it back and that's really all we are asking for is somebody to just allow us to sit down with them and and ask them what can we do you tell us what we need to do and give us a chance to do it i mean in some ways it may have been nice to to have that conversation prior to the decision being made <laughs> um yeah. but you know that's not where we're at right now we're just you know looking forward focusing forward and and hoping you know someone will step up and be the hero we need right now to save this program yeah dan okay. you Dan, I know that it's uh, with this program being so important to you. Uh, I know there's been so many swimmers over the years, but uh, for me, uh, talking to coach beforehand, the, the amount of money that is spent on the program is a small amount. And if you're looking at just the take the emotion out of it, if you look at the financials, there's for me personally, the thing that I'm upset about is you have a championship program that speaks for itself. We could talk a whole podcast about the, and we maybe we can do that at some point. Right now we're trying to save the program of the accomplishments of this program alone. But when you look at the amount of money that's spent on the program, it's next to nothing. So you're basically getting rid of a championship program that you can hang your hat on, so to speak. And it, it still doesn't solve the, the budget crisis that we're in at the ECU athletic program. Right. And, and even if you look beyond the, the immediate impact on ECU itself, you know, Lindsay made some great references to the, to the larger impact beyond just the core of the school. You know, there are they volunteer in the community. I think it's over 500 hours of community service that the swimming program offers to, to the Greenville area. And even beyond that, if you look at the students that are on the team right now, you've got people who are majoring in special education, people who are majoring in nursing, people who are going to make an impact on the community after, long after their swimming days are done in a positive way. A lot of them are going to stay there in Greenville, in North Carolina, and spend their careers there. Now they've got to find somewhere else to go if, if the program isn't saved. Uh, people who come from out of state, stay there, start small businesses. We have a ton of alumni who, who were from many other states who are now operating businesses and contributing to the economy in North Carolina. Uh, that otherwise wouldn't be there. So the ramifications really, you know, the, the more stones you throw in the water, the larger waves you get in terms of what the possible implications of this kind of decision now, uh, could be. And Bubba, I know that we've got a comment here. Mike Radford was a uh, big time wrestler back in the 70s coach. And uh, he says, let me tell you what happens. I always see we'll drop a sport in a heartbeat. Ask wrestling, the first Olympic sport. And uh, he was actually on the program that was really big in the 70s at ECU for wrestling. And he can tell you all about wh how how much it hurts. And he was a great athlete back then. I'm sure he is now. I'm sure he could wrestle me and beat me up. But um, <laughs> he he's fantastic. Uh, one of our friends of the podcast. And it's just sad to think about. We don't want to have something that meant so much to him, like the wrestling team, to be the same, like swim and dive, where we were talking about before, having a lot of great memories, but we're not creating new ones. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you one other thing, Dave, on this whole situation. Uh, the swimming team has been, and I've seen it and I've heard it, has been the focal point at a lot of Pirate Club gatherings. You know, over these last several years, there hasn't been a whole lot to talk about when you go out and you try to raise money. And swimming is right up front. With, you know, we, we won three straight championships uh, you know, just a few years ago and then won again this year. But they get on the road and they got to have something positive to talk about. And here's a team that's dominating at the conference, uh, not just on the, you know, obviously we dominate on the academic side and have done that forever. But, you know, Pirate Club, people in the Pirate Club like to know that. You know, they want to see success. And that's something we truly brought to the table. And once again, it goes back to a decision where we're all sitting here scratching our heads. It really does. You guys, uh, I wanted to ask you if it if it means this is the question I want to ask you guys uh, and we'll ask more swimmers. We get them. Uh, but if it means that it, you guys have to self fund the program, including people like me that love it. Is that something you're committed to doing if it from now on? And this is what I've heard on the streets kind of questions. So I want to ask you if it means is it possible that we could have former swimmers, people like me that want the program, that we would self fund the program is that sustainable? I've heard that word over and over again. So I want to give you the opportunity to answer that. Well, I guess I'll go first. Uh, anything's possible. 
you know, but you have to have that opportunity to make possible mm -hmm. happen. And, you know, we're only in this situation because of some absolutely terrible decisions that were made, you know, a few years ago, terrible right. decisions. And basically we won't be in this situation forever. So I'm not sure that a program has to fund itself for its entire life, but certainly it should be able to fund for a few years until we get back on our feet as a university. Uh, and once again, without the program, the university will lose money. Mm -hmm. It will lose money. So like we've said before, tell us what we need to do and give us a time period and give us a shot. Give us a shot. No doubt about it. As far as the uh, that very thing about giving you a shot uh, and, and a few years, uh, this could be a situation, like you said, Coach, and for you guys, for Dan and Lindsay, this could be a situation where in a few years, think about it, with uh, football is going to win again. We have a great coach in Mike Houston. we got a great coach in Joe Dooley with uh, basketball. We have a great coach. There's so many great coaches in East Carolina. We could go from top, you know, every one of them. And when it starts winning again, there's going to be more money coming in and people are not going to be mad. Hopefully, eventually won't be mad anymore about Ruffin McNeil being fired and all the problems. We're not going to get in that tonight. But eventually that's going to go away with winning. In addition, they'll start to rise up to swimming. Right, Coach? And, uh, <laughs> and that's part. That's not the only thing that's going to help us. But I really believe that's one of the problems is that having five straight losing seasons of football and all the problems we had internally with the athletic program people that were upset and maybe stuff at the university people were upset about and they stopped giving and um, only 5,300 members of the pirate club right now, which we've got to do a better job with that. Another show, as they say, but um, the money situation eventually will come back into our favor. I really believe that as far as having more money. And uh, in other words, with the budget cuts with uh, John Gilbert and everybody doing salary cuts, which is really hard to, um, I think a lot of that stuff will add up, but to get rid of the four sports, I think I had one friend, and I won't say his name, but he said it was uh, definitely, uh, in other words, premature to do the cut the sports when down the line we'll be good again. Yeah, it's it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem, right? <laughs> and and we want we want to have the chance to to address the short term problems and and sustain the program for for this time period until things do turn around because, like you said, Bert. We're, we're, we're confident that, that it will. We believe in the university and, and, and through, through all this, you know, we're, we're always pirates. We always support, uh, support the university and, and want to see it thrive. And, and we just want swimming and diving to be a part of, of that, that healthy and, and, and happy ECU. Yeah. And I know that I was going to say, I know guys that saw the pledges of, uh, it was over 400,000. Is that right? Um, are those, uh, one question I had for you guys, are those people really ready to make that commitment right now that they will give the 400,000 or is that over the a few year span or how do we stand uh, there? So those pledges are over a five year period. And most of the people who have pledged have pledged a certain amount per year for the next five years. Um, we do have about uh, 13,000 of pledges for the first year um, for just one year. But you know, after that, we kind of ask people, look, we are looking at uh, a sustainable source of income right now to try and get us over through the next couple of years. And, you know, let me just tell you something about swimmers. The way we get to where we are is by putting our head down and going to work. There's no other way to succeed or to make a division one program than to just put your head down and go to work. So doing this is exactly what we did our entire lives. We're putting our head down, we're going to work to get a job done. And so we are not afraid of a little hard work and we're not afraid of you know a few extra sets thrown in there when we thought we were gonna be on cool down. Um, we, can, we can keep going because that's what we've done our entire life. It's a championship winning team who is operating with one of the smallest budgets. Because if you have a lane, you have a chance. And that lane doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be the best in the country. If you have a lane, you have a chance. And that's that's it. There's no other excuses. So um, we, we've done this before. We've done this in our individual careers. We've done this as we've graduated, um, you know, whether we've gone on to parenthood or into our you know, careers and, and succeeding in life. This is what we do 
as swimmers and have had to always do. So um, I, I do believe that this community can can round up and and put our heads down and do what we have to do to be successful and to make this program, you know, real again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. When I look at that, uh, Bubba did an excellent job on the graphic there. The pool, it makes me want to dive in. Um, it's such a beautiful pool. Can you guys tell me, and we're going to, I promise you guys, we're trying to uh, get as many swimmers on and we will, uh, and we'll stay on uh, for a good while anyway, over the hour time lot we normally do. Um, do you guys have any great memories of some meets, uh, maybe uh, some uh, events maybe that you were didn't think you were going to do well, you were not feeling well, or any kind of favorite memories you have of being at, at the natatorium there at uh, Menji's? Um, I, or think maybe our, on the road? I think our UNCW rivalries back during my time were definitely some of our highlights. Um, mm -hmm. The amount of noise that was in Menji during those dual meets uh, was unbelievable. And just the energy in that place. You know, I talked about earlier coming out of the locker rooms. When we came out of the locker room for a UNCW meet, I mean, epic energy for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it just that, that, yeah, those meets for me were really, really, really fun. And because they were, you know, a local North Carolina team that was really just down the road, there was a lot of, you know, people who knew each other. So it was such a friendly, but yet strong okay, we're, we're on opposite sides now. And then at the end of the meet, we could shake hands and, uh, you know, wish, wish each other well. And I think that's one thing with swimmers you will always find is when you're behind the blocks, it's game on. Um, but I think we also were able to put that aside once we were, we were done. And that for me was something special. Um, and I think, again, during my time, our NC State, swimming in NC State, I can remember going or coming into Raleigh and I'm living here now. So it's, it's surreal, but coming into Raleigh and, and swimming to NC state and um, going back there now, sometimes when I have to coach my age group team and kind of remembering, Oh man. And again, that was another meet just full of, full of energy. So those are two highlights. I mm -hmm. think for me, how about you, Dan? Yeah, definitely UNCW any, any time, whether it was, in Wilmington or whether it was at Men Menji's, yeah, that was a, a next level of intensity. And, and I think one of the really um, interesting things about this situation we're in now with the team is we're getting a ton of support from the UNCW community because nobody lets wants a, a good rivalry to go to waste. Um, and and that was, I know it's not quite the same as today as it was when, when Lindsay and I were there, uh, but that was such a, a, a special and intense um, uh, <laughs> relationship. <laughs> uh, that'll always stand out for me as, as really some of the more uh, intense and enjoyable uh, uh, memories from competition there. As you see, Ginger Curl even says, UNC Wilmington supports bring back EC Swim. We're getting so many comments. We're trying to be fair to all the swimmers. Uh, I tell you what, you guys are awesome. The uh, alums, man, I tell you what, are they're putting so many. We're not even having to comment on every single one because we want to give you a chance to, to talk. But we're also trying to put the comments there up on the screen. So we appreciate uh, all the swimmers that are not on the, the show tonight they're participating through the uh obviously folks on facebook live yeah. and on youtube we're live on our youtube channel so we want to uh, let folks know if they don't know they can spread the word for us uh that way as well and i i'm just excited about the i guess the one good thing about this is like the cliche don't know what you got till it's gone um mm -hmm. I, I i'm surprised that I was telling folks that, and i'm not trying to be mean with the university but we've raised a lot of money with the and i say we uh, uh I feel a part of this movement, but um, to see the pledges, $400,000 is a lot of cash. And um, I think that uh, there, it once, and another thing, Coach, do you believe that once the number comes out, I am confident you'll hear that number. Once the number comes out, do you think more money will come in? Or that's what we'd like to think, right? Yeah, I think the big thing is now that we've got the website up and running, uh, it's a beautiful website that, that uh, Dan and another swimmer, uh, Holly, uh, put together. So I think that's going to make a difference because now people can go to one site. Uh, and, but I think we're still, you know, we still don't know how much we need uh, to raise, but that's why we're asking everyone just to give. You don't have to pay anything right now. Just what do you think you can do over, you know, a five-year pledge? And we need to get that number up. At this point, you know, I think that's probably the biggest thing that we need to do. Uh, and hopefully, like I said earlier, you know, we're trying to reach out to different pirate club folks 
and uh, folks in the community, because we've said it many times, we're looking for one or two heroes that all they have to do is make that commitment. And I think we'll, we'll hope, hopefully earn a, a place at the at the table and have some some constructive dialogue on what we can do to, to actually pay for, if not all, the majority of this program moving forward. All right, and we're going to try to get guys. We're going to try to get some more swimmers on. Um, so we'll, uh, if you can, if you want to stay in queue, we can, and then we'll bring you back on. If you guys want to stay with us, uh, Dan and Lindsay, we'll bring you back, and just uh, just a little bit. Uh, so if uh, Bubba, if you want to bring in a couple of the swimmers for me, uh, we've got uh, some more coming in. So uh, we'll bring Dan and Lindsay back. And uh, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. And we have Catherine Johnson and Randy help me. Is it Blandro? Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So we have you guys. And yeah, you... that was right. Blandro. All right, man. I'm good. Okay. That makes me feel good. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Um, you guys are awesome. Uh, tell, mm -hmm. tell us about your story with uh, ECU Swim and Dive. Randy, you want to go or? Um, I'll go. So I just finished up my sophomore year uh, swimming at awesome. ECU. I came in, um, I was one of the non-scholarship swimmers and I still loved every second of it and just shocked that it had to come to an end like this. Are you planning on, are you, are you counting on, let me ask you this and then we'll get Catherine in on a question. Are you planning on the program? Do you think, uh, are you confident that we're going to um, save the program and keep, continue on? Do you want to stay here as a pirate, in other words? Um, I'm super hopeful. That would be best case scenario. If not, I, I still don't know what I'm going to do yet, but that would be the perfect situation. So staying hopeful. There you go. How about you, Catherine? Are you still at the university? Uh, so I just graduated. I was lucky oh, okay. to graduate. Um, I'm confident that we'll be able to bring back the swim team. I'm just worried about when. Because all of all of the freshmen I've talked to wanted to stay, but chose to continue their swimming career, and they have every right to. They were wonderful, talented human beings that just deserved the world. And it breaks my heart knowing that they couldn't continue here at ECU. Coach, I had a question that I'm glad you said that, Catherine. Coach, let me ask you a question. I had a situation when I was uh, coaching at the Eastern North Carolina School for the Deaf. We had a situation where they didn't hire a football coach, and that's a whole other show, as they say. But it took us four years. We had a, a decent program for the football team. Uh, one year, we didn't have the program. We bring it back a year later. It took us four years to get back to where we were, um, where we were winning again. Uh, do you think it will uh, – and I don't want to compare. That's not even the comparison. But as far as cutting the program, that's what I'm talking about. Let's say it takes a year to get the program back. How much of an impact – do you have any idea how much of an impact that would have? on the program well obviously it's it will fall it will fall back some from the level that it's been uh, but i'll use uncw as an example uh they dropped their program and then they were able to bring it back and they lost a lot of their kids and they're seated right now to potentially win their conference next year wow so yeah we're not afraid to fight and you know Obviously, some of these freshmen can't wait around. I'm not sure if the program all of a sudden was reinstated, they could change their minds or whatnot. But the most important thing is, is, is to bring it back. And that's really what we're working on. It is a shame. I mean, what a terrible time to drop a program and, and during a pandemic. And, you know, pe these kids are, you know, they're very dealing with that. And now they've got to find another place to go. It's just the timing was, was absurd. And, and coach, and I'll ask you ladies as well um, about your recruitment. Talk about the, uh, how does coach Gabs and, and, and the assistants and everybody, how do you, how do you prepare if you're in that situation where you don't have the program currently technically on the books or on paper? Do you still recruit? I mean, can you recruit? I mean, how, I mean, uh, I'm just like puzzled. That's coming to my mind as someone that loves the program. Can you recruit still or say, we're really stay with us because we're really trying to keep the program. How do you, that's got to be the toughest uh, job to, even though we have a great program at ECU, that's still got to be a tough job to sell. 
uh, there's no recruiting. You can't recruit when you <laughs> when your program's okay. been cut. Right. Uh, and and as not only can you recruit, but you're losing the kids on your team. Yeah. Uh, but we realize that. I mean, that's just that's happened. We can't do anything about that. But we can bring it back, and we can give a, another future of swimmers to come in as pirates. That's what we're fighting for. You know, the decision is already ruined uh, for several kids, uh, but it hasn't ruined it for everybody, and it, and it won't ruin it if we can bring it back. I mean, it's just a matter of, of like we've said before, you know, let's sit down, let's have some, make some sensible, let's have a sensible discussion. What do we need to do? We have some. We would raise a lot more money. I think we will now with this website, but we would raise a lot more money if someone would say, here's what we're looking at. And I think people would jump all over that in a nanosecond. And Catherine, uh, we let's talk. Expect, and we would expect you to give $200. Me? Okay. I say it. That's fine with me. I can do it. I can do it. I don't know if it's uh 200,000 or anything. I'll have to find a rich uncle. Uh, Catherine, <laughs> Catherine, about you, you just graduated. Um, what are you, uh, talk about the impact that, that this program had on you as far as your career. I'm going to ask the same thing for you, Randy, so be thinking about that. But now that you're graduated, I know it's a different mindset and that you're alum. Uh, talk about what the program meant to you and talk about what you're going to do to help keep this program going. Well, when I graduated, I was really looking forward to coming back and being able to see all of my friends and family graduating or accomplishing even more. Um, being there in my senior year, I got to see so many talented people improve and just grow as students and people. And I loved it. And I really was looking forward to coming back and seeing how they grew more. Now that I'm not able to do that, it, it's, uh, it's a feeling of loss. But I know those who are currently on the team have lost even more because they don't get to experience what I experienced. Um, when I was listening to the alum earlier, Lindsay and Dan, um, I it, it just sent me back to the times where we we pretty much experienced the same thing. I remember Kobe and Coach Jabs telling me that I had already put in the work and that all of my work was just going to show in my conference championships and my final swims, and they really did. It, it it inspired me to work harder and it pushed me in the pool and classrooms and all of that. And so to look back and know that other people don't get to experience that, it, it, it breaks my heart. And hey, Randy, let's talk about you. I know that how devastating it is for those of us on the outside looking in that love the Pirates so much when the program has got such a storied history. I've been saying that for so many days in a row now over and over again. But talk about your emotions. Uh, what was it like uh, the day that you, maybe that Thursday when you found out? And how are you feeling right now? I know that you have to be devastated. Yeah. Um, so the Thursday, um, I was down in Greenville when we got the call. A couple uh, teammates were down there. And as soon as, like, I heard the words, I was just, and first I was, at first I was in shock and I was like, that can't be right. And then I like honestly didn't really hear the rest of the call. And then we had our team call and it was everyone had their cameras and sound on and everyone was just you could tell everyone was devastated and just didn't know what to do next. And then a few more of the team came down like for the next few days to be with each other and everyone was just couldn't believe it. And I think within the past couple of days, it's just starting to hit everyone that you need to figure out what you're going to do next, and it's hard. Talk about uh, maybe Coach Kobe can comment, but uh, as far as uh, Coach Jabs and all the coaches coach, and maybe you uh, ladies can too because you're close to them, how are they dealing with things? I know it's got to be really difficult for them as uh, Coach uh, Jabs, was, I know that was a swimmer for you, Coach, and I think he was assistant that he took over the program. He's rolling, and Coach of the Year for the American, and they win – and you guys won the conference championship. How are they dealing with things? Uh, obviously, we'd love to have them on and understand why they can't come on right now. But how are they doing right now? Well, as, as best as can be expected, I mean, think about it. The staff came back from winning their, the conference championship, which is the only one that was won on campus this year, had three people qualify for the NC2A championship meet. Right. 
was coach of the year. And then three weeks or four weeks later, they're all out of jobs, you know, without any, any input or, or anyone contacting a few weeks before to let us know that this was a potential. I mean, think about that. That's the, that's the congratulations you get for being successful. And I, and I said this before, that's not pirate nation. That's not what we're all about at all. And I, I hope people that, you know, I know everyone is into football and, and we are too, but I hope they take a good, strong look at this and say, you know what, that's not right. You know, and give, get on that website and give money and we can save this thing because, you know, that's what, that's, this is about pirate nation, not about just swimming. And I hope a lot of people, they should be upset with this because this was not a, a financial a good. I don't, we don't think it was a, a solid financial decision uh, at all. It's a very low funded program. Uh, if these kids give back to the community, parents that are coming in for meets, what they spend in town, what the pirate club people give because of the success of swimming. So it, it just, uh, it needs to be re-looked at. And I think the best way for that to happen is with the people in the Pirates Club. I mean, let's let's get angry. And let's say, hey, this, enough's enough. Let's, let's go ahead and see what we can do about this. And uh, for the guys that are waiting in queue in the studio, we'll get you in just a second. We've got a couple more questions for ladies. Uh, Randy, as far as you, I know you said you're hopeful. Um, can you talk about your, uh, do you have a major now? Are you, uh, are you planning on staying? I know, uh, you got some, maybe some decisions to make. We're going to hopefully what I would like to see guys before I pitch it to Randy just a second. Uh, you guys have been honored so many times you were talking about football games, coach. Wouldn't it be great to see the ECU swim and dive team honored for their conference championship and the coach of the year and know that we have the swim program back at halftime of a football game. I mean, you guys and the, the baseball team and different teams are honored. Uh, I would love to see that and know that we have the program continuing. It, that's, that's, that's incredible comment because they do that every year. Yeah. And, and here's, here's the team that won the only championship and they're not going to be around. So let's hope that does change. And I'll say one more thing. And, and Catherine uh, touched on it as did Dan uh, and Lindsay. Minji's Coliseum during swim meets, Minji's pool, that is a crazy place. And these girls can to attest, that place is typically full. We don't, it's not, we don't sell tickets. So it is full. And many meets, it's standing room only for every single home meet. And I'm telling you, I don't see a lot of other venues on our campus like that. Well, let's ask you ladies and we'll get the other guys in just a second, guys. Thanks for your patience. We're trying to get everybody in and uh, we'll get everybody on, I promise. So it's not a waste of time. Uh, ladies, talk about that uh, as far as the that home. It's not, I guess, the home, uh, not co home court, obviously. Uh, but you've got to have a, a advantage. You've got an a huge advantage with not only the program, for the support of the program. And I think that, Coach, I was going to say this earlier in the show, um, that the program not only is winning, but it has a tremendous amount of support from alums, people like me that love, uh, obviously, we love swimming. We love the fact, I love the fact it was tiddlywinks. I'm going to be pulling hard for ECU. I'm, I'm a pirate through and through. Um, that's got, ladies, that's got to be awesome to have that kind of advantage when you're in the pool and you hear the roar of that crowd. Yeah, I remember, I think it was my first home meet we had. Um, Jobs was talking to us before when I was a freshman, and he was like, there's only going to be standing room, or there's going to be people standing on the sides and, like, all the way to the diving well. And I was like, I don't, I didn't, I wasn't sure if I believed him, but he was right. And there were people pulling chairs up from the lobby, and it was pretty, it was packed and loud. How about you, Catherine? Yeah, I, I remember that, Randy. I remember you turning to me and be like, are you sure that's, that that doesn't seem right? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember a single meet where Minji's was not packed, and it's excellent. The energy in there, the roar of the crowd, everything, it gets us pumped for every single meet. It's There's never a dull moment. Well, ladies, both of you, thank you so much for spending time with us tonight. We look forward to 
uh, many more years with the swim program. I'm going to be confident because I'm a guy that's a glass half full kind of guy anyway. And Randy, I want you to stay a pirate. So I'm going to fight hard for the program. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, Catherine, too, at ECU for your hard work. And I hope that you'll be coming back and you'll have an opportunity that you can come back and many meets to come, many years to come, that you'll be able to come back and cheer uh, this great program on. Thank you. Thank you. For Thanks to both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All, right. All right. We've got some guys waiting and we had to put the ladies there for first, obviously ladies first. And uh, we're actually going to have now, Bub, if we can bring in, uh, we'll bring in a few of the guys here. Um, and uh, hey, how's it going, man? Uh, good. How are you? All right. Ryan Brennan and Ben Varden. How are you guys doing? Doing okay. How are you? Great to have you guys on. We've, uh, I guess, you've been able to hear the the show, and we got so many great uh, swimmers over the years. Uh, you guys, uh, whoever wants to start first, tell your story about the program and how you fit in. And are you graduated, not graduated alum? Uh, tell us about your story. Ben, you can take it. All right. Yeah. So I I came on. I was uh I was actually recruited by Kobe up there. I was the last class to to get recruited by him while he was still around. And that was a pleasure, and uh, I got three good years in at ECU so far, and uh, wouldn't trade any of them for the world. And uh, mostly, I just want to let people know that I'd like to give the younger guys the same opportunity to have these years that I've had, and and keep this environment around, keep this program around, so that other guys in the future, our guys and girls in the future, are able to have all the experiences that I did with this program, this family. Hey, Ben, before we mention to Ryan, what did Coach Kobe say to you? Uh, we've got him obviously on the show with us tonight, but what was the selling point that he gave you that convinced you to be a pirate out of curiosity? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, it was probably the Panera breakfast the last morning of my recruiting trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but, but he showed me around the whole campus, you know, introduced me to everybody and just and just made it feel like family, which it was. So uh, It wasn't tough for him to sell that at all, I think. Um, yeah, just I got the vibes instantly that everyone was so close there, and I really liked that about it. Cool. And Ryan, what about your story? Talk about your time at, at East Carolina. Oh, uh, for sure. I just finished up my second year. Um, okay. I'm from New Jersey, so I'm not from the North Carolina area. Um, I was recruited by Kate, and um, I came to ECU because one of my trip, I felt like it was a family, same as Ben said. Um, the team got along well. Everyone hangs out. It's it's a great atmosphere, and I really hope to continue it uh, going in the next couple of years. And uh, Mayor Bridgers, one of the alums, put up there. Ben has been named to the AAC All Academic Team multiple times as a top eight finisher in the conference. So uh, that's really awesome. And uh, and Coach Kobe, uh, Coach Jabs, more all of them, uh, a great, great gr group of coaches that continue your legacy. And I know that continue from even it goes way beyond that. Like we're talking for people that are just joining us. This is a program that's been great for literally the whole entire time, right? Sixty six years. That's correct. That's a long time to to uh, be on top of the mountain. Yeah, and uh, you said again. Do you think that the program could, could be competing for the conference championship? If, um, when we save the program, it could jump right back in and and compete. Well, if the program was still here, like it was, uh, uh, you know, three weeks ago. Uh, the guys would be would be heavy favorites uh, to to win again. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they, as great as they were the past year, they were, they were going to be faster next year. Well, Ryan has also been named to the American Athletic Conference All Academic Team. Uh, again, uh, Mayor Bridger, so I want to put that up there to be fair to both guys. And, uh, gentlemen, uh, as far as uh, the program, uh, I think the world of Coach Jabs, he's come on here to the show, I think it's three times, two or three times, and we really like him. Uh, he's a likable guy. Obviously, if uh, is he kind of the kind of coach you hear that cliche, the same thing with Coach Kobe. I know uh, the folks that swam for him that you would run through a brick wall for. You hear that cliche in sports all the time. Is that the way that Coach Kobe and Coach Jabs are? 
Yeah, I, I get the feel from both of them that they're all, or they're both just uh, all for one and one for all kind of guys. You know, it's we're all in there together, and no one person is more important than any other. They're just they're really focused on the team aspect of it, and um, including everybody. And it's it's a team effort, and that's a big takeaway that I've really gotten from both of those guys. What about Definitely. you, Ryan? I had Jabs as my uh, training coach this year, so he was my personal coach. And he definitely drives me every day in practice to be better, to go faster, and be just a more mindful swimmer. And I definitely feel the way that I could definitely run through a brick wall for him. One thing, I don't make this uh, about me, but I will tell you guys, another reason why I love the program, I was 11 years old in Durham growing up, and I was a part of a club team. And I didn't know what I was getting into, how difficult it would be to swim. I thought it was a cool thing. And I'll never forget the very first day of practice. It was an outdoor pool in April. The the temperature, the water temperature was 54 degrees. And we had to swim like 40 laps in the morning and 40 laps in the afternoon. And that's a great way to keep you going to swim is when the water temperature is 54 degrees. Um, so I have a deep amount. The reason I brought that up, I have a deep amount of respect for you guys because I want to tell Coach Kobe because uh, – I took it for granted. I didn't know how hard and difficult swimming would be. I'd always enjoyed, enjoyed it as a kid up to that point. And I found out real quick about how difficult the sport is. Well, if you swam in 54 degrees, you were the man. <laughs> That's some cold water. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was drastic. It really was. Uh -huh. um, but it was uh, definitely, we did very well down the line. It was worth the hard work we put in in the late spring and obviously in the summertime when we had the competition but uh, as far as competition goes uh, what was your background guys coming into ECU uh, obviously you had to be pretty good because when you have coach Kobe and Jabs and Moore and all the co great coaches there they had to see something in you that they knew that you guys could help contribute and keep this program going yeah I started swimming when I was uh, 12 years old uh, with club and, and summer league and then Came up into high school towards the end of my junior year. I started to get in contact with ECU. <clears throat> ECU, they were showing interest in recruiting me, and and I was all about it. You know, I was talking back and forth with Kobe that summer, and so eventually, um, as high school went on, I developed into a fast enough as fast enough athlete to to be a part of the team and. Um, yeah, it was, it was good to have that opportunity to get noticed by Kobe and Kevin and Jeff. No doubt about it. Uh, Coach, with the, with the program, uh, um, have you had, I guess the question, one of the questions I've been wanting to ask you all night, have you had any conversations with, with our athletic director, John Gilbert, or anybody at the university? Because you, for those that don't know, Coach is a Hall of Famer at ECU, so – uh, does that carry any weight that uh, you're 37 years at East Carolina? Looks doesn't look like it. Uh, I did get a call uh, from the athletic director when the program got dropped to kind of explain what happened and what not. But uh, we'd like to have somebody reach out to us now. Uh, this is when it, it will make a difference, you know, not when it happens. So at this point, I, we haven't heard from anybody. OK, and that's one thing I will say publicly is I'm hoping that um, that we'll have the the administration will have the courage to reach out to you guys. And um, I know that Lindsay said earlier, we'll bring them back on towards the end. But um, just to have the opportunity to sit at the table across and find out, um, you see, we, we have a, on purpose. We brought a lot of swimmers on from various backgrounds and and all that. And. Uh, for me personally, if it's a million dollars, two million, four million, I was saying earlier, for those that are just joining us, if that's what it takes, tell us what it takes to have the program, to sustain the program, to uh, if it's a few years and knowing that I was saying that football is going to do well and that actually helps us with um, fund a lot of the programs. And if you look at the amount of championships and the uh, the conference conference championships, national championships, a 66-year program I don't think should be thrown down the drain just because of a shortfall in budget-wise for just a few years. Well said. Uh, guys, uh, as far as the program is concerned, uh, 
are you hopeful that uh, we'll be able to save the program? Oh yeah, we always got hope. Um, you know, we've been communicating us guys through group message, and there's a lot of positive energy going on there. Everyone's, you know, everyone's confident or hopeful that we can pull this off. We're thinking positive because that's what we do. That's what we've done all seasons. So um, we're great at that, and it showed at the conference championship. But yeah, we're all keeping a positive attitude and. We, uh, we really have confidence that we can pull this off with the help of Pirate Nation. Coach, I wanted to ask you as far as, uh, let's say that tonight or tomorrow you get a call that we've saved the program. I'm just throwing it out there hypothetically. How long would it take to get the program back up and running as far as the logistics and the administrative piece of it? Uh, that day. I mean, it wouldn't take any time to get back. I mean, everyone's off right now anyway, so it would take no time okay. at all. Okay, so my point is, is that if you can find a way to get the program back, there's never a good time. But Is this a, a, the best time to bring the program back, knowing that you're off right now? Yeah, I mean, it'd be perfect. I know some of the freshmen are looking at other schools and maybe the sophomores, but no one's gone anywhere yet, so – yeah, we can. We can. It would be awesome to save it right now. I mean, we, we just keep moving on. It's only been, you know, just will be two weeks uh, tomorrow. Right, right. So, in other words, that would be a, a great story. And one thing I wanted to mention to you guys, and uh, that we're going to bring in Greg. Uh, we actually, I wanted to mention to you guys as far as the uh, Bowling Green saved their program. Uh, they brought it back. I know they had a pledge, guys, of. Uh, I think it was 1.5 million over three years that they had folks that, and next thing you know, they brought the program back. And I, I firmly believe, and I've been saying this all along that um, I don't think that the administration knew exactly how big a program this really is. And the alums, the amount of pirate club, the members that are the part of swimming, uh, the power, uh, I can tell you guys this, uh, the beginning of 19, we had one of the most successful podcasts we've ever had with Coach Jabs. Um, between the alums and people that love the program, it was over 600 listens. I never talk about how many listens we normally have um, because that's a kind of a private thing. But I just I, I knew how big the program was, but that was a big eye opener to me of how much support the program gets that we would get that kind of um, we're just a podcast. And the fact that that many people cared, it showed a lot to yours truly. That's nice. And ho hopefully we'll have uh, a bunch more tonight and, and folks that, you know, want to save ECU swim and dive. That's right. I want to remind folks about the, let's talk about the website and then we'll let you guys go and we'll bring in Greg here in a second. But coach, I know that uh, for folks that are just joining us, you launched a website today, uh, save ECU swim dive.org. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome uh, website. We'll give you the history of the program. Um, some of the uh, uh, live action is on it, some alumni stuff. Uh, what we're trying to do with the uh, five-year pledge and the GoFundMe, very uh, informative. And it's uh, put together extremely well. And I think uh, folks will enjoy taking a look at it and, and seeing what we're trying to do here, what our goal is. No doubt about it. Well, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to bring in Greg now. Appreciate you guys coming on tonight. It means a lot to us. Go Pirates and uh, keep fighting hard. We're going to definitely, one way or another, we'll save the program. I don't know when, but I, I feel confident uh, that we'll do that uh, for sure. And uh, we're going to go up to our, our next. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? All right. Tell everybody who you are and uh, where, what year you are, your story, if you will. Um, my name is Greg Popovic. I'm from Slovenia, and I just finished my eligibility on the swim team this past year. Um, yeah, that's my story. Talk about uh, we'll talk about your experience. I was going to talk to. I'm glad that we have you on. I wanted to ask Coach about the uh, importance of the international swimmers uh, right. to this program. I know that you guys have made a huge difference on the team, uh, so this is perfect that we have you on. Talk about your experience in Greenville and East Carolina. I mean, for most international students, we don't get to go on like recruiting trips and stuff. So recruiting can be a little more difficult. But I think as soon as 
like we step foot on ECU campus and actually meet the whole team, you get the like family atmosphere right away. So it's not hard to fit, fit in. That's one thing that East Carolina, I think as a whole coach has been not only sports, but academics walking to class. Everybody was so friendly at my time. I can't speak now. It's been 25 years this month that I graduated from East Carolina and walked uh, the graduation or May last month, I guess. Um, but it's uh, it still brings back great memories thinking about how everybody was so friendly and just a great time. It was definitely the best four years of my life. Uh, now that maybe second to uh, obviously I have kids now that are tremendous. I love very much and enjoying that, watching them grow up. But uh, as far as uh, did you have like a Greg, did you have like a culture shock coming to uh, the United States and coming to Greenville and East Carolina? A little bit, definitely, but I mean, we're away from home like nine to ten months a year, um, and ECU swim team is pretty much our second family because, I mean, we don't really get to see our family that much. Um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely had a cu culture shock, but in a good way. Yeah, no doubt. What is? Uh, can you tell us some of the things that you learned while you were? Uh, while you were in Greenville that maybe that you were maybe caught you off guard or by surprise uh, things about maybe our culture or maybe barbecue or is there anything that how well, different? I, I love the barbecue. I'll say that. Um, but, <laughs> uh, just that everyone's so nice. Like everyone goes out of their way to help each other, which was definitely different than back home. Like you, you wouldn't go out of your way to like open a door for someone or stuff, just like simple stuff like that. But it's a big difference. Coach, I wanted to ask you now that we have him on, what was, how, how big of an impact uh, do the international swimmers? And I know the answer to this, but I was going to ask you anyway, how big of an impact do these swimmers have on your program and now with coach Jeffs? Well, they've been uh, a big reason for our most recent success. And, uh, we love international kids because it, it brings a, a different culture uh, to the team. And the nice thing about the international athletes, and they're all over our campus and on some of the teams, but it gives ECU a footprint in other places. And that's important because ECU, you know, recruits worldwide. And also it gives, you know, we have a, an international uh, uh, house here that their job is to bring in international students. So, you know, we're helping obviously that part of campus in regards to recruiting, but no, they've been, they're all uh, very mature, uh, great kids, hardworking athletes. Uh, some will stay in the States. Uh, we've had s some stay right here in uh, North Carolina, but when they go back home, they're, they're, they're bringing pirate spirit, you know, back to other countries. And that's, very, very important. Did you stay, have you stayed in the United States or are you back at home? Uh, I'm still in Greenville. I'm doing a master's yeah. right now at ECU. So I'll be here yeah, for a while. And I saw that you were in the East Magazine. Uh, Mayor put that up uh, because of that, you were, uh, that you're working on your master's. Yeah, that magazine, I think it was for my research that I'm doing right now, but yeah. What is, what's the research on? Uh, well, I'm working on two projects because um, I have two mentors and one of them is on one of them is on the protein called fibrinogen, which is a precursor for blood clotting and stuff like that. And the other research is on human lipoxygenase enzyme, which is not very well researched, but it is, contributes to a lot of diseases. That's awesome, man. You're going to be here for, obviously, you want to see the program continue uh, because yeah, you're still yeah. at East Carolina and you can go to meets. And have you thought about, uh, since we have a legendary coach and Hall of Famer, have you thought about coaching? Uh, not yet. Uh, I don't really have time for that right now. But okay. if, I mean, I was willing to help any way I could with future Pirate Swimmers, but we have to bring the program back for that. <laughs> No doubt. And we're going to work hard and uh, hopefully 
uh, John Gilbert, Ryan Robinson, everybody at the uh, administration I love so much. Uh, I hope that you're watching tonight. I know they do watch. They do listen. So I'm hoping that they'll take a good listen to this and know that we want the program back. And I'll do whatever I can uh, with this platform. If it's social media, if it's a podcast, here, Facebook Live, YouTube, uh, where we're live, whatever it takes for us to have the program back, we're willing to support you guys any way we can. Thank you so much for your hard work for the program. I wish you the best of luck. It feels great to have a fellow pirate doing so well. And I know not only in the United States, but if you go back to your country, even if you visit there, uh, I know you have a lot of bragging rights for your family and it's just awesome. Uh, thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you. We appreciate this podcast. Thank you very much. We uh, appreciate you guys. And coach, we're going to bring back Lindsay and Dan. Now, Lindsay, want to have you guys back on uh, you and Dan. Uh, to bring you guys back in because uh, it's, tonight has been fabulous. I've been looking forward to this for a long time to have you guys on. Uh, when I heard the news, I told Bubba as soon as I, I couldn't believe it, and I told him we're going to have those guys on, and here we are uh, right now. Um, we've got a little bit of time left, if you guys don't mind. Uh, we're going to spin with you and uh, talk about uh, what we can do moving forward. You know, We can talk about how great the program is, but – I think that it's at the point where there's no doubt about how big of impact on Greenville. We talked about that. Um, how many conference championships, national championships back in the day um, that we have, that we just won the conference championship. We have coach of the year, coach jabs. Um, where do we go from here? Uh, all three of you with a panel, where do we go from here as far as to save ECU swim and dive? You know, I, I think that there are a couple things that, that we're, we're advocating for right now. One, like I mentioned earlier, is really just getting people to help be a voice for the cause uh, and, and to help encourage the administration to simply talk to us. I mean, that's, that's really the first step to us is come have a conversation. Let's talk about the future of these programs, because we know that there's a pathway forward. Uh, we know that there are other ways to, to serve the best interests of the East Carolina community beyond losing these programs, beyond losing any sports programs. You know, we want, we want to make sure that, that this experience isn't shared by any other athletic programs. So we, w we want to be the, the creative thinkers, the ones who solve this really tremendous problem. And we want to do it hand in hand with the administration. Uh, and, and they have the opportunity to be the heroes here too. You know, uh, uh, John Gilbert has a chance to, to help us be the ones who figure this out. And when you and when you look around the country to all the other programs that are being cut, I think it's close to 100 programs across the country that have been cut right. um, in the midst of COVID. We could be the ones to help figure this out and, and sustain these really important members of the university community through this current time and make sure they're here to, to help enrich the collegiate experience for, for decades to come. And Coach, you know, all three of you, I know that one of the things that was cool is that you guys uh, have, a, I know we we're talking a rivalry, but UNC Wilmington, we talked about that earlier, but they brought their program back. Uh, so it's possible to bring this program back. I know you guys have had, a, I, that's kind of interesting too. I wanted to mention an interesting campaign in social media where you have other swim programs across the country, including I know South Carolina, the Gamecocks. I know I saw that up there today on social media. Uh, talk about that. That is a really cool uh, coach, and uh, for you former swimmers with alums, really cool to see former um, to see programs that are supporting you guys. It says a lot about the the swimming community. Well, we've had not not just South Carolina, but many of the college yeah. programs and many of the USS age group programs. Uh, I see two or three each day with signs that say "Save East Carolina Swimming." And we've posted many of them. So it's a community that stretches across the entire country. And anytime one of them has issues like we are, we all band together. So uh, I think Dan said it quite, you know, quite well. We just want to let's figure this out. Let's be the team. Let's be the school that figures it out. And uh, I think I think it could be a huge success story for everybody. So mm -hmm. we're just going to work hard in what we've been doing. Uh, we're just getting started with some of the things that we've got planned and how we're going to try to, you know, get this thing going. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we're just hoping to to uh, someone gives us a, a shoots an email or a call or maybe a couple of big pirate club folks say, you know what, 
I believe in this and I'm going to give this much to our to our five year pledge program. But the website is is up today. It's very informative. It is well done, and uh, I, I uh, you know, would invite everyone to, to take a peek at it. Well, it's one of the really interesting things I didn't know is uh, one of my favorite swimmers of all time, uh, Mark Spitz. Actually, I know that he actually had a record for a long time, I believe, at the natatorium. And uh, he actually is someone that uh, I think vocally has come out in support of the program, right? He has, as long as uh, he, he has done that. He actually held the record. Uh, in 1969, it was uh, we, ho we uh, hosted uh, senior nationals. The national championship meet was hosted in Menji's Coliseum. Wow! And we, we had a lot of big names. It was Spitz's name was up there for a while. He finally broke his record, but uh, yeah, he was. Uh, and he's in. They're all in support. You know, uh, Michael Phelps, I believe, signed our petition. Am I right with that, Dan or Lindsay? I don't. I, yeah, I, I have heard something that he's reached out to, to somebody, but um, yeah, it's it's one big family. And anytime a family has an issue, we're going to kind of circle the wagons a little bit. I know our co-host Bubba, did you have a question? I know that you've been dad tonight and uh, yeah. I want to bring you in. I'm sorry. I've been trying to be respectful of the fact that you're Mr. Mom. Oh, no problem. I was going to chime in. You were talking about social media and other, other programs reaching out and so forth. That's awesome to see. Um, but one of the things that I was going to mention, um, and I know, Lindsay, I mentioned this to you uh, and tagged you guys on Twitter and uh, maybe Facebook as well. Um, the Bowling Green baseball program was cut here in the last uh, two or three weeks. And they've already made that uh, commitment to uh, different donors, raising at least a million and a half over three years. And they brought the program back already. So and that certainly provides hope to you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just wanted to kind of go back to some uh, on the international swimmers. I know I was back yeah. backstage listening and um, <laughs> International swimmers hold a special place in my heart. I returned back to North Carolina three years ago after living in coaching right. for 14 years overseas. I was in Zambia for six years and Kenya for eight years. And um, along those ways with kids that I had, you know, I, from little ones up to high schoolers, I had kids who I said, yeah, they could do it. And in my heart, I'm thinking, you know, especially when jabs took over, I'm thinking, all right, jabs, I got one coming for you. You know, and that was in my heart because I knew if, you know, I knew I those kids could be fast enough to swim at a D1 school in the U.S. And I knew that if that school was ECU, they were going to be taken care of and they were going to find a family far away from home. And, you know, all those 14 years I was looking for those kids that I knew could do it. And, and I had them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it just breaks my heart that to think that that opportunity would not be there. Um, because it is a special place. And I think ECU as a team, no matter where you came from, no matter who you are, you found a home. You found a home in Minji's and you found a home amongst your teammates there. And I think that's something that's really special. And I think when you bring, when you have a program that is attracting people from all over the world, I think that is something that says something positive about a program and in no way could ever be a negative. You know, it just shows you the reputation um, of the school and, and the team itself. And, um, just looking at a few things, you know, people have been pledging and in their emails that they're sending and I'm reading them and we are so grateful, but they're also adding, could probably give more down the road. You know, so many people who have already pledged to that, you know, close to 400,000 over five years have said, and give me a year and I could probably look at increasing that pledge. So, you talk about the longevity of it. People are ready for that. But again, we just need someone to give us the guidance and to say, all right, here's what you need. And once people have that assurance, once we kind of know what our end goal is um, for sure, then it's just a matter of, you know, getting those pledges in and people going, all right, now we know what we're going. Let's do this. And as I said before, once we know what we're aiming for, we put our head down and we do it. And that's all we're just looking for is is what our goal is. So um, it's just been so great. Out about it. I'm glad you brought that up. What? Sorry, go ahead. No doubt about it. I appreciate you talking about it. No, I'm sorry. I had a little bit of a lag. I apologize. Uh, you actually uh, brought the, the fact you brought about your background with international swimmers. Thank you for doing that. I was going to mention that 
earlier on in the show. As far as uh, I know the video you had out today, you were talking about merchandise. Are you guys going to sell any kind of T-shirts? Or I know you talk about the mask earlier, but there's like T-shirts or different things that people can buy. Yeah, we we are we've got a few ideas in the works. We've already got some masks, which are obviously needed right now. Um, so we've got some masks in the works that are being printed, and I expect to be done um, before the end of this week. Uh, we also have uh, T-shirts that we're working on, and, and you know, perhaps down the road, or just you know, we're slowly trying to look at these things. We're also trying to be very conscious of the funds we have and how we spend them, and obviously, you know, all the proceeds from things. We're, we're trying to sell are going to go right back into our campaign. But with the expenses we have, we want to just be prudent of, of how we are spending the funds that we have had donated so far. So um, trying to be proactive and things like that while also being um, fiscally responsible. No doubt about it. It's going to be fun. Uh, let's give the uh, I wanted to put up the uh, Bubba. Can we put that swim and dive uh, website up again? And what before we go, we got a couple more minutes. We'll give you. Thanks, uh, you guys, so much for your time tonight. We're going to try to give everybody the swimmers and uh, the story. And uh, certainly we'd love to, uh, as another thing, too, is uh, any kind of positive news, anything, we want to have you guys back on. I want to say that before we go. Uh, what kind of final comments do you want to give? Uh, Coach, uh, I tell you what, I've heard that you've given a great speech many, many times before the meets. Is there something you could give this team right now, the Save ECU Swim and Dive team? right now uh right before we get out to battle as far as raising the money well six, 66 years of success from year one 1953 to 2020 with absolutely no interruption in between um this is one of ecu's flag athletic programs we need not just alumni we need pirate fans Pirate club members, people in the community that maybe see this and say, you know what, I'm going to give to this. I mean, this is a good, this is a good cause. This, and I've told our alumni many times, we want this, expect this to be uh, our greatest championship ever. This is the championship number twenty-three. All right, uh, Dan. What uh, what about you? Um, is is essentially what, what Coach Kobe was saying there is is you know, we're we're committed to seeing this through, and we're and this is going to be probably our greatest victory uh, in the history of the program when we're able to pull this off. And I think we're, we're all very confident that that we will because we see the support, of course, from our alumni base, but also from the larger uh, East Carolina and the, and the larger uh, swimming community across the country. So we we know that it's possible when we see the support is there to do it. Um, there, there was a, I don't know if they still do it, but there was a tradition on the team when, when I was there that they gave t-shirts every year and it, and it just said on the back, be happy in your work. Uh, and it just really reinforced the idea that, that to accomplish anything great, you've got to, as Lindsay has said, put your head down and, and just go about the task at hand uh, and commit yourself to doing the hard work that's going to make that victory at the end even sweeter. And, and that's kind of where we are now is working with our supporters, working with uh, the, every community we can possibly get our voice into uh, to do the work of the programs back. And, and we're sure that by the end of it, we'll have been successful. And what about you, Lindsay? Yeah, I mean, I think um, just a quick story. I, my first year on the pool deck in Kenya, I was walking over to the uh, officials table. I, don't, I can't remember why, uh, but I walked past a timer and I saw this purple sweatshirt and I thought, no, it can't be. And sure enough, it was an ECU shirt. And so I talked on the shore, I said, go Pirates. And he kind of looked at me funny. I said, you're wearing an East Carolina University sweatshirt. I said, when I see that, I'm gonna tell you go Pirates. And uh, since then over the you know next eight years, um, he happened to just time a lot. Uh, we, the timers we had, were not necessarily volunteers of parents and people attending. Um, they kind of do it slightly different there. And so every time he was there, he'd see me, he'd say, go Pirates. And I said, that's right. Um, our pirate love runs deep. We are one pirate nation. And we want to make sure that our team continues to be a positive impact legacy team for our school and for the surrounding community. And uh, we need not only our ECU family, but the surrounding Greenville you know, uh, community as well. And you know, lovers of all things swimming all throughout the nation we need everyone's help and we need everyone to get on you know get on this pirate ship 
and and help help us uh, continue sailing. No doubt about it. I want to say before we go, thank you to all the swimmers here tonight and to Coach Kobe as well. I just want to say to Coach um, and to all the swimmers that we're going to do everything we can. I know that I want to say to Ryan Robinson, John Gilbert, we love you very much. Uh, we do personally, professionally. I uh, got a chance to know the guys. Please call Coach Kobe. Uh, call uh, all the folks. Tell them, uh, bring them into a meeting. Tell them what they have to raise. That's all we're asking for. We want to give them the platform tonight. And I want to tell you guys, uh, Coach uh, Bubba was teasing me that you put me on the spot, but I will continue to give for the calls. I promise you I will. Um, I'm not going to say that and not do it. I promise you, uh, man of my word, I am a pirate. Uh, I'll die a pirate. I'm not a paid pirate. I'm actually somebody that will be around for a long, long time. I want to thank all of you for it's been a tremendous story. And I know this is going to happen. I don't know the exact date that we'll find out the great news, but I hope that you guys will come back on our podcast, give us breaking news and we'll uh, celebrate. And I'm not really a drinker, but I'll have some champagne for you. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Thank you, Dave. All right. Thank Thanks. you guys so much. I uh, hope you have a great night. Appreciate everybody watching and listening. You've been, this is episode. It's been about save EC swim and dive and you've been listening and watching the sports objective podcast. Go pirates. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.